So what are the four governing principles of natural selection? Natural selection was Darwin's theory of evolution, and they obviously have four principles. Let's go into depth about what each of these principles mean so we can get a better under, understanding of what Darwin was thinking. First principle of, of natural selection um, is variations. Variations or variability is the idea that there are innate differences in organisms. Look at your family or your classmates. Each person has distinguishable characteristics, observable and unobservable, like traits such as um, inheriting diseases or hair color or um, height or smile or neck length or foot length, um, even, the pers even personality. And the list goes on and on. When you think of variability, think differences. He, um, he said that these differences that exist naturally in the population are also inheritable. Um, meaning that these differences, like in stripes or in spots of these um, ladybugs, um, or immunity to a disease, these can be passed down from generation to generation. So these are two very important differences between Darwin and his predecessors like Lamarck or Aristotle who thought that either traits were fixed throughout a lifetime or that um, people attempted to have differences, not that they were just naturally occurring. And Darwin really knew nothing about genes or mutations just yet. So, um, so this was important for his time. Um, the next principle of natural selection is called selective pressure. Um, this is the idea that populations um, can exceed their resources. So there's too many people for this one piece of bread. And thus overpopulation can lead to competition, so fighting between, um, between these organisms, or in this case these little stick figures. Um, and so there's this, what's called selective pressure, either for or against certain traits. Those that have the traits that enable them to get to the food will survive, and thus bringing us to our fourth principle, uh, fitness and survival of the fittest. Not only do these traits, and it could be strength, or it could be brains, or it could be leg length, um, or the idea that a whale developed a flipper, the fact that they that um, certain organisms had innate differences that led them to survive long enough, and this is important, in order to reproduce. So reproductive success was key to this principle of survival of the fittest. So only if you were able to produce, all right, and pass on your offspring, or sorry, pass on to your offspring your traits, uh, would, would that trait continue to thrive and exist in a population. Other traits that, you know, conferred a disadvantage uh, would diminish in the population. Ultimately, and this is also important, that, that um, at, only after a lot of time, put a clock here, many, 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 many generations of, of an existing organism. So for bacteria, that could be, many generations could occur in a few hours. But for humans, you know, this would take millions of years for a new species to evolve. Um, and so after generations and generations, either a new species would evolve um, or um, the population would then go extinct. So that's the conclusion of Darwin's theories that because of innate differences, and because those differences will be passed on, when there's competition, the differences that enable the uh, most reproductive success would uh, therefore be more available in the population and ultimately lead to perhaps a new species.